Hello, we are here with Midtown Tribune News. Last week there was a meeting held by Councilman Ari Kagan at the Lone Star Sports Bar and Grill in Bay Ridge. Ari Kagan and his supporters discussed how to resolve key issues in New York City, such as homelessness, providing safety in public schools, supporting NYPD, and other issues concerning the community. Local politicians and speakers, such as Renee Mitchell and Brian Fox, joined Ari Kagan to address affordable housing, educational reforms, guidelines of jail bail policies, and more. And so many others, and, and certainly the councilman will, will uh, mention everybody. I, I, we'd be here all night if we mentioned all the people. It's such a great turnout. But, um, you know, my name is Lee McCabe. I've, I've run for city council before. I know this is a very hard thing to do. And uh, I, I ran trying to represent this area. I love Bay Ridge. Um, I was born and raised in this neighborhood. It means a lot to me. Now the district has changed. So we still have Bay Ridge and we have some new neighborhoods in, uh, in Coney Island, in, um, in uh, Gravesend, yes. and in Seagate. Let's give a shout out. All right. Coney Island, Bath Beach, Beach, Gravesend, Seagate. Take it back. So um, what I'd like to say, though, is, um, you know, I have, I have a, a long history of working in this community. I've worked for elected officials. I've been a community activist. I've done a lot of volunteer work, sometimes very thankless. I do it because I love, I love my community. You know, my community raised me. I won't get into it, but uh, I've had a, I had a hard time in life at some, at, at some periods of my life. My family had a hard time. My community stepped in and, and helped me out when I needed it most, helped my father out, helped my mother out. And uh, my way of paying back was getting involved in this community. I can tell you that for over 20 years, across the aisle and, and everywhere else, I've seen Ari Kagan. Ari Kagan has been there, again, doing some of the selfless work that goes into community organizing, that goes into representing the community. For 20 years, he's been there. And he always hasn't been front and center as a politician. He's been behind the scenes. He's been doing the grassroots work. That's the kind of leader that we need. That's the kind of person that we need in office. And when you look around this room, you know, we announced this maybe two weeks ago and we filled this place up. And everyone you talk to here says the same thing about Ari. And, and the other thing is, they've all known him for a long time because he's been doing community work for such a long time. He represents half of this district. The goal in this campaign is to make sure he represents the other half. You all here are doing a great service by coming and supporting that. We've got to get past the primary and then win the general election. I know we've got the right choice. Let's give him a round of applause. All the team, re-elect City Council Thank you so much, Neil. You definitely know how to fire up the crowd. Yes. So first of all, I would like to thank each one of you for coming. Some of you came a long way, some of you came a few blocks away. But this is like very warm place, very welcoming place, very hospitable place. So I'm very happy that Lone Star opened its door for us. And I would like to thank each one of you for helping my campaign, for supporting me every day. And first of all, of course, I would like to mention my beautiful wife, Bella. Thank you so much, Bella. And my daughter, Victoria. Victoria, Victoria. My son is supporting me 100%. He couldn't make it tonight, Yakov. But he is definitely with us, awesome. and he will come to Brooklyn many times, as many as we ask him to come. Oh, I would like to ask my amazing uh, staff, who is here as a... They, they're volunteering, they ask to come themselves. I did not ask anybody to come. They said, no, we wanted to be with you at the moment. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Archer. I Thank you, Angel. Thank you so much for all your help. I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, thank you. Thank you. I also would like to say that uh, uh, Liam mentioned half of the district, second half of the district. Listen, when it was very districting, like I fought to keep district intact and compact. But right now, it's all I would say, my children. You know, like it's my uh, people, residents of South and Brooklyn. I serve everyone. The whole point of being councilman is not the glory, is not the title, is not the salary, is not like city hall. Recently, uh, speaker of New York City Council decided to punish me for becoming Republican. She moved me from one office to another with no windows. So what? The most important are not windows in my office at 250 Broadway. The most important is 
my eyes should be open, my heart should be open. So I will see each one of you. I will serve each one of you. I help my community. Every community. This is one of the most diverse districts in, in, in New York. And it is my duty, honor, privilege and obligation to serve everyone, to help everyone. When we help people, we never ask, are you Republican or Democrat? Are you rich or poor? Are you Asian or Russian or Chinese or African American or Hispanic or Italian or Irish or Greek or Norwegian, etc.? We never ask this question because the whole point is to help everybody. My favorite uh, sentence, I would say, slogan to bring people and communities together. Everybody. That's the whole point. We have so much hate, unfortunately, especially in the last several years, partially because of its lawlessness in New York City, because when anything goes, it's like no enforcement of anything. But again, I see my mission not just to uh, take care of garbage, which is very, very, very important, don't get me wrong, not just to take care of potholes, not just to fix the light on the street, as Janine can affirm, and not just to help a person with individual housing issue, but also to bring people and communities together. I always say it. Like in City Hall, one day, one guy came to talk about legislation and started to speak hate toward Asian Americans. He came to talk about legislation and he started to spew hate right away. Nobody stopped him, nobody interrupted him for a minute. I learned about it about like 30 minutes later. I immediately went to social media, blasted him. And when it was the time to vote for funding from city council to this organization, Vocal New York, which is a joke of course, Vocal New York, they, they claim that this guy is a community leader. So not just I voted against money to this organization, taxpayers' money. I made this speech like I'm talking right now. I said, may I, have, may I explain my vote? Give me two minutes. And I said that hate against one is a hate against everyone. Not just I'm against giving money to this organization. We all should condemn this organization. Because they said this is community leader. The guy was a rapist, by the way, who raped 12 years, 12 years old girl. And he came to protest legislation because he wanted us not to check criminal backgrounds of prospective tenants. He came to protest, uh, protest us because we were against this legislation and he was for it. So and he came and started to blast Asian Americans, which was insanity. Long story short, my opponent, Councilman Justin Brennan, was silent during the speech, after the speech, till today, he is not saying a single word about it. And he voted for this $100,000 allocation to this organization that brought this guy to City Hall in the first place. The favorite words from my Democratic colleagues in New York City Council very often, I for all, I for all, no questions asked, no questions asked. I all, I'm a journalist by trade, I always ask questions. Why are we going to vote for it? Why we need to vote only about electricity rates in Puerto Rico, not about electricity rates in Brooklyn? Oh, you are racist. Why you do not love Puerto Rico? I love Puerto Rico. I love Puerto Ricans. And I love Mexico. And I love Ukraine. And I love all countries in the world. But I was elected by people in South and Brooklyn. And I believe that it's a problem that electricity rates in New York City are exorbitant. And nobody wants to talk about it. Because the like, medicine is a monopoly. So before I vote for a resolution talking about electricity rates anywhere else, first I wanted to talk about electricity rates right here at home in Brooklyn because it's exorbitant rates. And, and, and I can go, go on and on and on. But before I go on, I would like to say that I'm working right now in, in half of the district. But I'm going door to door, business to business, person by person, in every part of the district, including in Bay Ridge. And you can ask my campaign manager, Jenny Moore, you can ask Liam McCabe, you can ask Brian Fox, am I coming to Bay Ridge? Very soon people in Bay Ridge will say, oh, he is everywhere. Like, my opponent saw me to one event and said, what are you doing here? I said, thank you very much. That's a compliment. Because he is scared of me, he is posting about me, he is talking about me, he is posting cartoons about me, which tells me one thing, he is a desperate. He is absolutely desperate. Because he knows what's gonna happen on November 7th. He knows. But, he, but before we go to November 7th, we need to go to June 27th. June 27th is the Republican primary. I will say only one word about my esteemed Republican opponents. 
The biggest accusation against me so far, everywhere, that they were not real Republicans. Because they even invented some kind of like, oh, Brooklyn real Republican, something like this. So, I can tell you, not just I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a real Republican or not real Republican, but I can tell you, as a person, as an American citizen, as New Yorker, I always supported NYPD and law enforcement. I always fought for gifted and talented programs. I always fought for uh, keeping staff exam, uh, entrance exams to specialized schools. I was at rally after rally saying you cannot play American dream in a lottery. So I, I've done it for many, many years. It's not just like I started today or yesterday. Last May, when I was a Democrat in the city council, I received a thank you letter from PBA thanking me for my stance supporting the police, supporting the law enforcement. That was last May. I can tell you, I, I visited every precinct in my district several times. And you can ask Janine, how many times did they do a roll call, thanking our police officers and telling them, you're not abandoned. Don't listen to this noise. Listen to communities on the ground. Communities of Southern Brooklyn are very, very supportive of police. Every community. Some people say, this community supports police, but this community doesn't. That's not true. Everywhere I go, whether it's a NYCHA building in Coney Island, or it's a private house in Bay Ridge. Everybody has first question, do you support police? Do you support law enforcement? Do you want public safety? Everybody. So it's universally same issues and same concerns. Public safety is number one and continues to be number one. Second, of course, everybody wants a better future for our children and grandchildren. Our schools should teach math, English, science, American history, American history. So like. Recently, our Common Sense Caucus of City Council met Chancellor, and I said, can I ask you a question? Why are you teaching American history in our middle schools only till 1945? America existed in 1946, 47, 40. Why don't you teach more about 20th century and 21st century? He promised he will make changes in the curriculum. We will call him to we came, we said like, we need more choice. We need to support charter schools and public schools and private schools and religious schools. And everybody needs security. And we always advocating for more school safety officers. Some of my democratic, I would say, socialist colleagues come from the same, we do, even today we received email from one lady, she lives in Bay Ridge, she said, why do we have so many school safety officers? Are you kidding me? Right now in my current district, I have 29, public schools, every principal of every school said we need more, every one of them said we need more school safety officers. And uh, some of the schools, 1,000 students, one the school safety officer, we need at least two or three, because someone needs to go to the bathroom, someone has family obligations, one school safety officer for 1,000 students, that's insane. And some people feel we don't need them at all, and we have few the council members were telling me, this is uh, militarized schools. Our system is the most militarized in America. Before I even became council member, one group, and Jenny knows the whole story. It's called Advocates for Children. It was December of 2020. Mind you, I was a Democrat, 2020, December. Came to me and said, 2020, and told me, Ari Kagan, you want to be councilman? Please, please, we want you uh, to cut uh, funding for school safety officers. This is militarized school system. I said, like, you need to change the name of your organization. What do you mean? Change the name. It should be Advocates for Murdered Children. Because you want our children to be dead. What are you talking about? I will never advocate to cut funding from school safety officers. I will advocate to double, to triple the funding. We need safe schools. We need discipline in schools. When we met recently with the Republican caucus, we met School chancellor, we talked about discipline in school because sometimes teachers are afraid just to enter classroom. They're afraid because anything goes in New York City, anything goes. You can say anything, you can do anything, you can attack anybody. Look what happened a few days ago in Queens. A group of teenagers came to a Chinese restaurant and sucked everything and left, laughing at everything. No consequences. When I came to Rikers Island, and some of our uh, uh, democratic colleagues are saying we need to abolish solitary confinement. It's very inhumane. And they tell me, I said, why? Because United Nations said so. I said, what? 
The United Nations is now running New York City. New York City jail system is run by the United Nations. So I went myself. In the, by the end of December, right before New Year, I visited Rikers Island. And I was in so-called restrictive housing, because, you know, we cannot call things like that, they, they, they should be. But like, okay, no more solitary confinement, it's called restrictive housing now. Okay, so, uh, I visited, and the guy there saying, I don't know why I'm here, I don't know, like, I did nothing. It's my constitutional rights are broken, and this lady who is in charge of this floor, she is wrong, she never explained to me why I'm here. I, I turned out and said, what's going on? And then she said, I'll tell you later, not in front of him. And then I learned that the guy was in a jail for two slashings. And then he came to jail and slashed two more people inside the jail, including nurse in a health clinic inside the jail. And we cannot separate this person from a general population? What are you talking about? And then they, no, 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 we want a safety. Who wants safety? When I switched to Republican Party, I said, Democratic Party is doing everything possible to make all of us less safe, to make that's sure right, that everybody right. is attacked, everybody is robbed, everybody is, I'm sorry, raped, or, or even killed, because no consequences. And they want the criminals to come to our houses, they fly no criminal background checks for prospective tenants, they want the businesses being like uh, robbed. Again, criminals are laughing, it's anything goes. Like, right. And I will never accept it as a reality. And that's one of the major reasons why I'm, I wanted to, to stay, I wanted to make a difference in New York City Council. Because my opponent is always silent on the most important issues of the day, like public safety, like quality of life, like cost of living, etc. Completely silent. And don't tell me that Republicans only for rich people. You know what happened today? Today, the unions, major unions of New York City voted Basically, to punish municipal retirees, 250,000 people will have to pay three times more every month for their health care and their retirees. And guess who was for it in city council and who was against it? Ready? All Republicans were fighting to protect municipal retirees. And all Democrats, I for all. I for all. Why? You saying you're for little guy. You saying you're for... Uh, people who are not so wealthy. So why you're not protecting them? Why you're not helping them? They, they're retirees, municipal retirees, former retired people who are like firefighters, nurses, uh, police officers, teachers, and they, now they have to pay three times more. And union supposed to uh, supposed to protect them, supposed to fight for their interests. No, that's why we have unions. No, uh, they just voted today to do completely opposite, to take away good quality health care and to force everybody to pay more. And Republicans fighting for municipal retirees. Everybody uh, on the Republican side we hold the press conferences, etc. So don't tell me who is for a little guy. I know, I see it every single day. Or restaurants, we are in a restaurant right now, correct? So just a few months ago it was a vote in city council that gives $250 fine for every violation of the beautiful law that if someone will put napkins or plastic knives or plastic uh, forks into takeout order, $250 fine if customers specifically did not request this because we wanted to take care of environment. And they wanted to take care of environment so badly that they abolished, dissolved committee I was chair last year, Waterfronts and Resiliency Committee. And by the way, as the chair of this committee, I talked about New York City preparedness or, or, or lack of preparedness for storms and hurricanes. So who is a climate denier? Which party is a climate denier? The party that dissolved Waterfronts and Resiliency Committee, ignoring waterfront communities of Coney Island, of Brighton Beach, of Manhattan Beach, of Harvard Beach, of Staten Island. Or party that like stood for these communities. It's clear to me which party is standing for communities. It's not even a question. And what I also noticed, going door to door in Bay Ridge, going door to door in Best Beach, going door to door in Coney Island, in Seagate, in Warbus houses. People are not stupid. And that's why every year more and more people in South and Brooklyn voting for Republican candidates for every position possible, for city council, for assembly, for state senate, for governor. In New York State, four to one uh, advantage for Democrats, four to one. And Lee Zeldin last year got 47%. He almost won the election. My point is like, don't believe everybody like New York Times or something like this. No, even Democrats are fed up. 
Everybody wants to vote for Republican because they know only one party in New York City and New York State defending rule of law, good quality education, quality of life, fighting to lower cost of living. Like, I recently saw a post of my Democratic opponent. He was joking about $8 for, for a dozen of eggs. He wrote, go vegan. It's an absurd reaction, completely absurd. Instead of advising people to go vegan because very expensive food, how about like lowering property taxes? How about lowering taxes on every single business? How about not inventing another fine and another regulation on everybody? How, like it's absurd. And when they're asking about affordable housing, they're killing affordable housing. Therefore, this local law 97 forcing co-ops and condominiums and many other large properties to invest hundreds of millions of dollars just to uh, comply with this local law 97. It was passed by Democrats and of course my opponent voted for it. So, but one more time, we cannot relax till November. June 27 is the Republican primaries. And again, if the only accusation from another side that I was a Democrat, then Ronald Reagan was a Democrat, Donald Trump was a Democrat, you know, like, uh, uh, Giuliani, Giuliani was a Democrat, you know, like, and then they decided, you know what, enough is enough. And another accusation, I made a picture with Justin Brennan in 2020. Guess what? I wanted to invite my good friend, Brian Fox. Please, Brian, come. My response is, my response is, Bring it on. Tell me that I made a picture with Justin Brennan in 2021. Now I made a picture with Brian Fox. And Brian Fox is in my, on my team. He's on my team. There are three other Republicans running. But Brian Fox is on my team, on our team. Because he knows that I'm the only Republican in this race who can beat Justin Brennan. Yes. Brian Fox, please. Yeah, Brian. Thank you. I always a pleasure to be here, uh, honestly, and, and they already, like, going off the back of what Ari said, I mean, there's so many, there's so many good plans that Ari has for the district, and, and let me just be clear uh, before I get started, um, we're 100% taking back this district, and Ari pays us more than going to do it. Rene Mitchell, this lady is helping homeless people every day. When we're talking about homelessness crisis, it's a crisis created by Democratic Party in New York City. Believe me, I came to America in 1993, and I thought New York City will always have like legions of homeless people. And guess what? In the last year of Rudy Giuliani, there were very few homeless people in New York City, and population in shelters was like half of today. So, which means if you want to uh, resolve homelessness crisis, elect Republicans. And, we, and it doesn't mean we are heartless people. We are volunteering for homeless shelters. And we help in homeless people every day. Renee Mitchell saving homeless people every single day. She takes care of people even in Queens, in Manhattan, in, in, in airports of homeless people because she cares about them. Thank you. My name is Renee Mitchell, wife of Aaron Kagan said. I'm the co-chair of the policy committee for the National Inclusion of Homeless. I deal with homelessness in 50 states. I'm also executive director of my own nonprofit in Brooklyn called Breaking the Cycle Drop Court. Now his opponent, okay, I have to work with all parties be it independent, conservative, or Republican or Democrat. My experience with Justin Brannan and the homeless people is that he don't care, okay? It's shelters being built every day in New York City. 800 bed shelters, 500 bed shelters, okay? 30 people in the room. Some people have medical problems, some people have mental health problems, some people have drug problems, and they're warehousing them like cattle. Okay, profit over human lives. $5,000 a month, okay, for each individual in the shelter. Affordable housing, okay, low income housing, nothing is being built. Okay, streets are breaking up in Back Beach, okay, sanitation problems. Homeless, unsheltered people all in front of storefronts. Who I have to go to to get services and help is Avian Kagan. He's not even in this district. It's Justin Brandon's district. But Avian Kagan 
is the one that answers the call. Justin Branham, okay, inside trade deals, accommodation. Him, Bernard, okay, the public advocate, Brand, uh, uh, Lander, Dan Goldman, okay, all of them are a bunch of corrupt politicians. And in order for us to address the homeless Tsami, the crime Tsami, we have to vote these people out of office. Now you heard Arian Kagan talk about crime. The reason why it's such a crime problem is because of the first bill by Kathy Hogan, which is called Less Than More. Less Than More was the first bill she signed into law, where 191 people was released from the, from the jail, 28 people back in the jail, and this bill, you can rob, steal, rape a person or whatever, and be out of jail the next day. Then they signed another policy in place, raise the age. Raise the age, okay, now career criminals Gang bangers, okay, can actually manipulate younger generations, okay, to have guns, to rob, to kill, to stab, rape, or whatever, knowing that there's not going to be no consequences because it's raised to age. And as long as they don't meet, meet, meet that age expectation, they'll be released from jail with no consequences. So, the city is on a destruction, and if you people don't start rising up and demanding that these people be held accountable and they do their job, New York City will no longer be safe for any of us or our families, and, and the homeless problem will turn into Skid Row. Thank you, okay, and I hope that everybody come out and vote for Aaron Cable. Yeah. Oh,